You should have already watched the video where I talked about the derivative rules. So if you haven't watched that video yet, you should go back and watch that one first before we go through these questions here. You want to make sure you understand the different rules because we're going to be applying those here on these problems. So assuming you've already watched that already, let's go ahead and answer these. Anytime you see x raised to a certain power, you can apply the power rule. So the power rule means that you're going to take this power here, this is going to be your n, n comes down and then you subtract 1 from your uh, original power. So if I want to do y primed, it means the 12 is going to come down, I have my x, and then I'm just going to subtract 1 from my original power, it was 12, and so I'll take it down to 11. And that's it, that's all you have to do, there's only one term, that would be your final answer. Let's look at part B. Now part B has three different terms. So one of our derivative rules says that we can just apply the derivative to each of these terms separately, so I can apply the power rule to each of these separately in order to get the answer. So we're going to do g primed. Now in order to do that, what we're going to do here is there's a constant, 3 halves. So whenever you have something like this, you're going to put the constant down and then you'll multiply that by whatever the derivative of x to the sixth is. So bring down that power and apply the power rule only to x to the sixth power. That 6 is going to come down, you have x, and then subtract 1 from the original power, it's the fifth. So you had 6x to the fifth would be the derivative of the x to the sixth. Then we just multiply it by 3 halves. We'll simplify that in the next step. Now let's do the second term. Now second term you have a minus 1 that's there in front and there's a 1 here. So when I apply the derivative, I'm going to use the power rule again. So I have a minus 1, that's the constant that's written down there, just like the 3 halves. You put that one down first. And for this term, the 1, the 1's going to come down in front of the x and then I have a 0 there. So I have a negative 1 times a 1x to the 0 and that's applying the power rule to that x right there. Now the 3 in the end, you don't need to use a power rule on that because this is our constant rule. The derivative of 3 is going to be 0. So I get a plus 0 on the end for that one. And then uh, once I combine all this together, I get 9 over, uh, 18 over 2 is 9, 9x to the 5th. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so this would just be a 9x to the 5th minus 1. The 0 we don't have to put, so this would end up being our final answer. So let me circle these. That's that one. We'll circle this one. Okay. Uh, so again, the, last, the 3 here, the reason why that went to 0, because in the previous video we talked about the derivative of any constant, doesn't matter what it is, if there's no variable in it, the derivative is always going to be 0, so that's where that came from. Then the last one, the last one we have two things that are being multiplied together here. We are going to talk about this in a later video, how you do that, there's a rule that's called the product rule, but in this case we're not going to use the product rule, we're going to do another technique where you're going to multiply each of these out. So in this case we're just going to foil that first. So if that's the first step we'll do. We'll do 18x squared minus 15x cubed. So we get to that step. And then we're going to apply the, the power rule. Okay, so the power rule will apply to this whole thing. The 18 will leave it and then we're going to put the derivative of x squared. 2 comes down, x, subtract 1 from the power, this be 2x to the first power or just 2x. This one is minus 15. We're going to multiply it by the derivative of x cubed. The 3 is going to come down. We have x, subtract 1 from the power, and you get a square. The last thing we're doing is just simplifying it. So you're going to get 36x minus 15x squared. And you could either leave your answer like this, or if you'd like to factor it, you could factor that as well. So it all depends on what your teacher requires or what your online homework system requires of you, but you can try putting that answer in online first uh, in the online homework system, and it should mark that one as correct. But again, if somehow, if not, then you can, may have to do a factoring step on that.